So go ahead and start your stuff. <clears throat> it really is sticky. The last class, um, last statement I made is that the Exodus is important to the fathers. It's important to the divine father. It's important to the Egyptian fathers. It's important to Israel. It's important to every father that's involved in the whole situation. All of Israel and their firstborn sons. All of Egypt and their firstborn sons. And the father with his firstborn son. <clears throat> um, so, last class I said, uh, and I didn't really deliver last class because I want to share it in here. I, I mentioned that I may be sharing something you've never heard before. Uh, I would encourage you not to believe me necessarily. Um, um, uh, but to check it out in the scriptures, uh, although I should be able to lay it out clear enough where it's kind of hard to argue with. But um, to uh, one of the things I've realized is that God, God's mind is nothing like ours. His ways are not our ways, we say. You know, his thoughts are not our thoughts, which just passed through. But if you comprehend that even if I really saw something from God, actually, there's no guarantee uh, that the best that you would get is just me saying what I heard from God. Unless you, you're, and when your spirit bears witness with something, that's not the end of it. Well, I mean, it's not, and that's, that, that tends to be our way. We, we, you know, the spirit bears with them and go, okay, yeah, amen, that's true. But we don't, you know, that's not going to stick in us. My, my saying his thoughts will not become life in you unless, of course, and the spirit of God can quicken you or quicken that in you. But that's quickening it and it being a, um, it just being bearing witness that it's true is two different things. And uh, that's why the Bible says search the scriptures. And that's why we search the scriptures. And that's why we care about searching the scriptures. All right. So um, the, uh, the subtitle for this little paragraph here is, For some, deliverance is everything. For some, deliverance is everything. If you think about it, there were actually two different groups of people who exited Egypt. Two different groups of people that exited Egypt. Now let that thought sink in because I don't, I've never heard that anywhere before. They were the firstborn and the nation of Israel who were not firstborn. And I'll show you that it is actually two separate groups. Okay? The firstborn or the firstborns, however you want to say it, but all the firstborn that got redeemed. And then all of Israel. The rest of it was the, the children of Israel. Uh, so I said, they, the firstborn and the nation of Israel who were not firstborn. The blood on the doorpost was so the firstborn of Israel would not die. Come on, run, run that one over in your head a little bit. The blood on the doorpost was not for the children of Israel, but for the firstborn so that they wouldn't die. Amen? Amen? Unless you don't know the story well enough, that's absolutely the fact. And the whole issue, by the time he finished the ninth plague, he said, 
I'm not dealing with all of y'all anymore on any level except firstborn. I'm only going to deal with Israel's or Egypt's or mine, but that's where it all, we're changing everything. And the middle of that's going to be a slain lamb. Okay. No one else was in danger except the firstborn of Israel. If they hadn't put the blood on the doorpost, if Israel hadn't put it on the doorpost, the firstborn would have died, but all the rest of Israel would have lived. You know, this has always been in our Bible. <laughs> um, the firstborn were redeemed, but the Israelites that were not firstborns, the Israelites who weren't firstborns, were delivered. The firstborn were redeemed. The rest of them were delivered. Throw the uh, chart up there for me, Scott, if you wouldn't mind. All right, before we look at this, let me hit one last statement. One group was delivered from bondage and the other was redeemed from death. All right. So I want to look at this chart up here. Um, chart number one <clears throat> has Israel and then going out beside it is the facts pertaining to Israel as a people. And then underneath it is the firstborn of Israel. All right. So Israel was delivered, they were delivered from bondage by the slain lamb, and they were a benefactor, and I'll explain that in a minute. But the firstborn were not delivered, they were redeemed from death. By the slain lamb. <laughs> slain, the lamb was slain to save the firstborn. Now this, can you at least see that just this information right here could change a whole lot of stuff? A whole lot of our concepts, a whole lot of the things that we've held is true this all of a sudden goes, wait a minute. God's dealing with uh, his firstborn son. God's calling his firstborn out. All right. So, again, at the bottom of the, the chart number one there, the firstborn, the last part says, slain to sa the lamb was slain to save the firstborn. But under, the, under Israel, at the very top, says benefactor. Israel, who were not firstborn, were simply benefactors of the Lamb who brought them out of bondage. They weren't the subject. They weren't the subject of, the, of it. They were just because the firstborn, they got the blood, because the lamb died, got the blood up there, and they ate it. The firstborn lived, and God said, I'm bringing my firstborn out. So guess who gets to come along with them? Everybody else. They're benefactors. But it's not about them. And that's why at the very beginning of last class I said, the Exodus is not about deliverance from bondage, which many people say and think and look at, and that's a secondary issue. All right, so let's go to chart number two there. Israel, um, they were the saved nation <coughs> is delivered from, and I got a speaker in my way there, Scott. Can you move it to the left a little more? Well, maybe not. I'll okay. All right. So the save, uh, Israel, the saved nation, is delivered from sacrifice. I'll explain that one in just a minute. 
<laughs> Number two, well, let's look, let's, let's just go down with the ones and the twos and threes. So, so the firstborn on number one, the saved firstborn is sacrificed. Now, here is a very important point that I tried to stress last time, too. The saved firstborn belong to God from that point on. He redeemed them for himself. And he redeemed them, and what we'll see probably in our next next time we have this class, I'll just literally go down the scriptures and show you the progression in the scriptures of how when God started off, he just said, the firstborn are mine. I want all the firstborn for sacrifice, whether man or beast, period. That's, that's how he started. And that was supposed to, because see, he didn't just immediately turn around in the next sentence and say, or the next verse and say, I'm just kidding or something like that. He, that was supposed to stay until they went down the word a little bit. And I've even got, what I did was I put these scriptures down and I, I put them, I searched out where they were said at. These were in Egypt, these were in Succoth, these were at, at uh, Mount Sinai, this was after Mount Sinai. You see not only a progression as they move away from Egypt, but you see a progression in relationship to the sacrifice of the firstborn. Okay. But the first statements that are made are meant for Israel, the ones that came out, but didn't die and didn't have to have a sacrifice. For Israel, in relationship to their firstborn, to go all the firstborn, not just now, but forever, belong to God in relationship to sacrifice. And that's, that's absolutely unreversible. You, you can't reverse it. Now, we'll see what God does do. But that reality is not reversible. And I think that, the, I think that, the, that Israel, when all this happened, they realized, number one, God is serious. Number two, the firstborn from now on, for as long as we exist, belong to God, and they're not ours anymore. And we have to give our firstborn to God yes. in relationship to sacrifice. Yes. Okay. You're going, whoa, that was what God was after. Okay. But obviously the New Testament's going to bring out more of that right there. All right. So, number two, Israel, the lamb died for Israel to bring them out of bondage. Can you say amen? I mean, in a very, I'm, a, I'm just going to say it the way it's written in the Bible, although this sounds weird. Israel wasn't redeemed. They were delivered. Because, and form, foremost, not because the firstborn and the blood but the firstborn lamb. He did deliver them. Okay. But if you want to talk about what was redeemed, it's the firstborn. Because they were slated for death. Okay. And it was going to be a death. The, the firstborn of Egypt died because they were slated for death. The firstborn of Israel, maybe you don't remember this, maybe you do. They were going to die too if they didn't get the blood on the post and everything. Okay, They were slated for death. Well, that never changed. Once the lamb died and they got redeemed, they're still slated for death, but not death from which there's no resurrection. But they are slated for death. And they're slated not for, not for slaughter or a death angel, but by an altar by an altar okay so number number two on the chart for the firstborn 
firstborn died with the lamb. All right. So you can, you can go to the New Testament and find this. We died with Christ. He didn't just die for our sins. Can I get an amen? Okay. I mean, we died with the lamb. They, when that lamb died in Egypt, the firstborn was dead then. That's our death. This is who we are now. We're God's living dead, <laughs> if you will. All right, so now let's go to number three on uh, pertaining to Israel at the top. Let, let go from Egypt. So he said, at one place he said, let my people go. He then, but the main one was that he said, let my firstborn son go. Let my son go, my firstborn. God, can't you hear that? The way God said it, let my son go, my firstborn son. Now, you tell me that's not important. You tell me that doesn't have an impact. He didn't just say, let my son go. He said, let my son, let my son go, my firstborn. Okay. All right. So, let go from Egypt. Uh, number three at the top. Uh, the Israel was let go from Egypt. The firstborn were let go to the father. Let my firstborn go that they may come and serve me by sacrifice in a feast. Okay. They're going to the father. And the others are going from something, from Egypt. Okay. But in, in a sense, you can't say they're going from death. Because they weren't slated to die on any front. I told you when they when the when the ten plagues happened, God you know did all this, did this, did that. Nobody, nothing changed. And at the tenth one, He said, "That's it. We're dealing with firstborns. Nothing else anymore." Would it behoove us to understand what that means? Because it's a major shift from just trying to save the people to get them out of bondage. I heard your cry. He didn't hear the cry of the, of the firstborn. He just heard the people's cry, and I want to deliver you out. But when it got to a certain point, he said, that's it. I don't want to talk about that anymore. You'll come out with this. But now we're going to deal with real issues and see, I realize that I've been at this for six, six months. And some of you are just hearing this for the first time. But it gets not good. It gets incredible. And, and if, if I could, you know, Ben, I kind of, poor guy. <laughs> ben and I went out to lunch, and I mean, I just poured all this on him. <laughs> He's just going, oh, my God. But I mean, and he knows a little more than you all do. Because we, I just went, look, this, 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 this. And it was true, wasn't it? They all just went, oh, my God. And it all came out of the prodigal son story. The, the, that's why I made you, the last time we did the prodigal, I said, what are the main features? You need to remember this because we're going to be seeing this over and over. But it's going to expand. All right. So number, uh, number four. Israel lives by the blood, but the firstborn lives by the lamb. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, for Israel, you know, the, the blood and for, for Christianity. I mean, for Christianity, the blood represents covering up your sins. Okay. It has nothing to do with displaying the excellencies of the lamb. It, ha it is... Covering your sin so that you can go free. <laughs> okay? But for the firstborn, for the firstborn, they don't live by the blood. They live by the lamb, the lamb that they eat. All right. All right. So I didn't see. Where are we at on this? Past time? Okay. So 
Um, this subject, I was surprisingly taken through every main character in Genesis. And it was so specific that it was scary. It didn't matter who was second born or third born or it didn't even matter who was first born. It was who God said is the first born. Or may I say it, may I correct this? It's who the father said is his firstborn son. That's all that ended up ultimately counting was God the father. For example, in the case of Jacob and Esau, Isaac was the father of those twins, and Isaac chose his firstborn son Esau. But before they were born, God had already made a decision. Who was his firstborn? And from where it all came. So that took me off into some of the prophets. And I couldn't believe it. You start looking in the prophets, and you know, one of the one of the well, the the division through the prophets is what, Kelly? The big division. Judah and Israel. And Judah becomes the firstborn. Wow. Now, and I, I can, on this one, I can go down scriptures one after another and go, look, look what the subject is. Look, 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 look. And I can do it not in one prophet, but a bunch of them. And it's just like the issue with God the Father is his firstborn son. And, and I, let me take the blame. I've emphasized the son. But God has rearranged my understanding and my view. He does not just want his son. He wants his firstborn son. And he's serious. He's serious. All right, so now if you can just imagine, I'm just going to do it an imaginary thing. If you can just imagine if this is correct and this is spiritually correct, then there are people who are delivered from bondage who never know anything about the firstborn. They are delivered by the Lamb, by the death of the Lamb. By the slain lamb. That's how they got out of bondage. And they rejoice and they glory in it. But they live by the blood and they all talk about being let go from bondage. And they boldly and rightly proclaim that the lamb died for them. Because it's all true. But if this if there's any semblance of truth in this. God's looking for his firstborn son. And that relates to, they, they are related to him in sacrifice. In fact, they are going to be the sacrifice. <laughs> That's the eye opener of what God says while they're yet in Egypt. You're coming to me, but here's why you're coming. And then they are let go to go be with the Father. Not, not even the promised land. Not salvation. Not heaven. Not any of that stuff. They're going to the Father by the firstborn. And then finally, then that means that this other group of people continually refer to the blood that was on the doorpost as the big point of the deliverance from Egypt. And those are that which is the firstborn 
Son, that which is of the firstborn Son, that which is in, lives by partaking of the Lamb. They live by it. That's what they live by. Father, we ask you to just keep preparing our hearts through your Holy Spirit for a for the journey that you, you decided you wanted us to go on. You took us into the prodigal son story and there it just seemed like a certain man had two sons and most people only saw those two sons and never saw the son that finally came forth in the prodigal. They never saw the feast they never saw the sacrifice. They never saw the eating of it. They never saw the father dancing for joy, making merry with his son, his firstborn son. They only saw that if you mess up, that you are the God of the second chance and you'll give us a second chance. Father, Open wide our hearts. And that you know that's been my prayer for us. Open wide our hearts to see as you see, Father, pertaining to your firstborn. Let this not be another great teaching that's like water under the bridge and disappears and no one remembers anything. This is for your heart, for your sake, Father. And this is for your heart and your sake, Son, firstborn Son, that we can let you go to be with your Father in sacrifice. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.